Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 5 of my Kerbal Space Program series for beginners. And this horrible monstrosity here is something I built using the latest science I unlocked. I'm actually going to show you some uh, more stuff about how science works in Kerbal Space Program. So, I unlocked this giant science lab structure which will help us do more science when we are further from home. I unlocked the thermometer, we have unlocked the pressure uh, barometer. The solar panels, uh, and those will all help us to do a great many things. So I've just kind of, you know, stuck them all together on a spacecraft, which is, doesn't actually have any rockets. It's just going to do science from the launch pad. But I want to show you a bunch of this stuff here. Also, to make things easier, let's learn about action groups. Now, action groups are where you select an item after selecting this gear icon at the top. And you can bind anything from its right-click menu to an action group. So, a great example would be to bind observing the materials to custom 01. What is custom 01? Well, it's what happens when you push the 1 key. So, we'll bind all our science to this single button there. So, observe mystery goo. We have log the temperature, log the pressure, and we cannot forget, of course, crew report. So when we press the, the one button, all these things will actually happen at the same time. So let's uh, do that. Uh, launch. Oh no, before we launch, one other thing we need to remember is the science lab needs people inside it. So go to the crew tab. And by default, oh well, yeah, by default you might have to drag crew in here, right? Depending upon how your thing has been running. But there, I'm going to put Bill and Bob into the science lab to make sure they're in there. If there's nobody in there, then the science lab will not work. Let's launch to nowhere. We're not going anywhere. We're just launching. Okay, so here we are on our launch to nowhere. First thing you'll notice, only Jebediah Kerman is showing here. That's because uh, you can access the crew here by clicking on the hatch of the science lab. There is no interior model for the science lab, so they can't render these portraits because you can see it in the background. So we're here. What are we here for? We are here to do science. So let's press the one key. And we do all this new science. So one of the things the... Uh, science lab is here for is because it lets you process in lab module. Now what does that mean? It says plus 10%. Well let's take a look at the recovery parameters here. So it says if we recover this we will get 7.5 science and what that shows you is a, a green bar is how much we'll get from this experiment and then if we run it again we might get more science and this is our absolute maximum amount of science. Now when we recover it, or when we transmit it, sorry, we only get 20% of that. But the science lab lets us take a look at the samples, collect more science, and package it up in a format which Mission Control can, of course, pass down to the boys in the lab so that they can do, I don't know, more sciencey stuff. So that's what you do. If you're a long way from home, you can use the science lab to get more data home. So the crew assessment of the situation doesn't help us, so let's reset that. Atmospheric pressure information, we can get 25% more. And you see that that has actually come back immediately. Look, this is the processing happening up the top. So it's immediately gone and said we've got 25% more, so let's transmit that. And you'll see the transmitter popping up there. The temperature reading, readings are quite literally nominal. Do that and transmit that. The goo doesn't seem to, so we don't need, there's nothing that we can do to the goo, we could try that I guess. Uh, mystery goo, yeah, we're not going to get any science from transmitting it, so we'll reset that. Okay, so now there's one thing to notice, so you remember the mystery goo containers, you can only run the science experiment once? Well, not all experiments are like that. You can run these uh, smaller ones again and again. Yeah, so the material study information has come back, so let's transmit that data. Yes, we're going to transmit that data, and thereby render our materials exposure bay science junior thingy inoperable. So in this spacecraft, you can run as many crew reports as you like. You can run as many uh, pressure reports as you like, right? So I, can, I haven't reset this or anything, it just lets me run it again. We have, however, collected all the science we can get from here. Similarly... Uh, can we log that temperature? 
the temperature readings are quite literally nominal. By transmitting, we will get no signs. But actually, I made a mistake. I should keep that data because when I recover this after this mission, I will have a little more. So keep that data. Uh, log the pressure data. Keep that data. Now, if you remember, uh, it showed that there was a little more science we could get from that. Well, there's one other thing the science bay does. And if you right click on it, you can uh, clean experiments. So that will start cleaning and you'll see it start crunching down there. Now cleaning actually takes power I th by the looks of things, right? So what we're seeing here is our power is, our electric charge is decreasing. That's because we're taking power out. These solar panels, however, are generating power and are hopefully offsetting the amount of power that we're losing from transmitting and doing all this magnificent science. So you can right click on these things. These are simple, small solar panels. They're the easiest ones to get in the game. They need the least amount of research. But uh, they uh, are also very convenient because you don't need to unfold them. The larger solar panels are much better. Oh, look, our science has completed. So our uh, science processing has completed and now this experiment is as good as new so I can run it again. Let me observe the bay once more. And it says the materials show little sign of change. So uh, I can process that once more and it gives, oh actually it would give me 0.2 science. But look, I'm gonna get 0.757 science just by recovering that. So that's what I'm gonna do because getting science is good. So anyway, once you've unlocked the larger solar panels, it's still good to have these single solar panels on your spacecraft because if you've got a space probe and you forget to unfurl your solar panel, you can find your spacecraft dead in space. And I guess I'm going to show you that. So let's recover this vessel and we'll see how much science we got ultimately. Ah, there we have 56 science now. So we could take another quick visit to the science lab and see what we can get here we could actually get some advanced rocketry, which would give me bigger parts, or I could pick up some... Well, you see, this I think is more interesting because these have a few extra things. We have the strut connector, the launch stability enhancer, the radial decoupler, and this tricoupler. So I'm gonna, gonna take that so we can use it on our next spacecraft. Okay, so the next mission, we're going to send a probe into space. Now that we have unlocked uh, solar panels, we're going to send a space probe into deep space where it can collect some science and transmit it back. But mostly this is an exercise in achieving escape velocity. We can take copies of all our experiments, well, just because it helps to have them all around. We only need one copy of these. You see, we can run these twice and get more data, but... These ones we don't need multiple copies of. We'll stick a communitron on the top here, actually, and then we need to find place to put the put our um, solar panels. Let's stick a bunch of solar panels around the outside here. There, eight of them should do it. That should give us enough science. And uh, while we're here, we could stick some batteries on as well, because batteries will help us live a little longer. That's our spacecraft that we're going to send out into deep space. We're going to need a rocket on it. And liquid fuel engine, that's great. And, you know, if you need to move the whole spacecraft and you can't find the root object, hold shift and click on it, on the, the spacecraft. So there we go, now we just need a spacecraft big enough to fling this into the icy depths of space. So, just build things out as we've done before. We'll probably put four of these in here. We need to get up to about 3.3 kilometers per second. And this should do us just fine, actually. Let's use these slightly bigger decouplers, right? Oh, there, we'll put three of them on. We'll put on these solid fuel boosters. Now, one of the things you might have noticed is that when these fire, they wobble. So to counteract wobble, we have something called struts. Struts basically you connect from one part to another. So I've picked up the strut here and you can see a tiny object. I'm just going to stick it there and then drag it to the middle. And this is all in symmetry mode, you'll notice. So that there adds an extra joint which should help suppress the wobble. Now it might wobble to the left and right, so you can, you know, you can go to town here. You can add 
struts that go there and that will stop wobbling in one direction. You can add struts here to help in the other direction. You know, if you're an engineer, you know that uh, you want to think in terms of triangles, right? Now, remember how we were supporting the vehicle with uh, decouplers and struts? Now we have these launch clamps. Launch clamps will hold your spacecraft down and hopefully will stop it falling down on the pad, although that is not guaranteed. Finally, we'll just add some winglets here so we've got some steering. And that's us. Uh, adjust our stage, of course, because we want the rockets to fire at the same time as we re release the launch clamps. And we want this engine to fire at the same time. Okay, so we're going to launch this to deep space. Okay, so this is our spacecraft. We are going to launch it onto uh, an escape trajectory. An escape trajectory is where we go so fast that we escape the, the gravity of Kerbin. And we'll explain that on the way up. So press T to enable the SAS, uh, hold shift to go to 100% throttle, and hit space to go. Now, while we are going straight up like a bat out of hell, we can in fact do some science. We have not yet collected pressure science, so let's collect and record an atmospheric pressure. Great. And we can do temperature and transmit that. Now, these, of course, after transmitting, you can do it again. Right? Whereas you can't do it again with the uh, with these, the, the materials bay or the goo bay. Okay, so we ditch that. And now we're going up, we should probably start to turn our spacecraft over a little. Uh, we should be aiming for roughly 45 degrees. You could probably get away with going straight up, but it's actually more efficient to escape to infinity by going up and sideways because then you're not having gravity slowing you down all the way. The more you turn, the less gravity affects your uh, acceleration. Of course, the more you tend to fall downwards. But once you're going up fast enough... A uh, little review data here, sorry. I'm going to reset that. I'm going to collect more science here because we're high up now. There, transmit it. You see, so we have lower atmosphere and upper atmosphere. More science. I'm just going to keep turning this spacecraft over, trying to get it down towards the horizon. I think at this point I can probably just let the button go and have this logged, have this locked in its uh, orientation. More pressure data! More! I don't want to observe the materials bay because I, I want to take those all the way to deep space, but I can abuse the temperature scans as much as I like. Once again, log pressure data, and we've got everything we need. Okay. Let's reset that. So we're going up and we're going 130 kilometers now. We can just hold it in this orientation, but at some point, there's our acceleration there. Watch, we know when our stage is over because our acceleration will drop to zero. Uh, 200. Oh, and we're turning just a little here, and there's a reason for that. There we go. Okay. So there's a reason why we were turning, and the reason why we were turning is that this spacecraft is slightly asymmetric. You see the... Oh, where is it? Uh, there. There is the antenna. That was enough to force the entire spacecraft to turn because once we got high enough, these fins did not have any stabilizing capability. The only thing keeping it straight was this probe, and the probe does not have nearly as much torque as a capsule. Anyway, as you may have noticed, we are not yet on an escape trajectory. We will remedy that by firing our engines again. And while we're up here, we're just going to throttle our engine and fire. So I'm going to do more pressure data. There is no pressure in space, so that will be useless from now on. Log temperature. We can get temperature when we are near Kerbin, but not when we are far from Kerbin. Let's get another temperature signal. Yes, so we can collect almost all the data. Give us all the sciences. And that's us. Okay reset that experiment and we'll carry it into deep space. Now we need to get to about 3.3 kilometers per second. That is what is called escape velocity, right? Escape velocity is where you have exceeded, the velocity you have has exceeded the binding energy due to the force of gravity. And that's a fancy way of saying that the planet can no longer hold you back. The gravity you know, even although gravity will continue to affect you to infinity, it will not bring you to a stop and bring you back, ever, even at infinity. That is escape velocity for you. 
And so, I'm going to press X because I think we've exceeded escape velocity. It says 372. Three, and I look, and that's me. I'm flying off. See, my orbit is now not, it's not an ellipse. It's not a circle. It's uh, going up high, and we're going to come back. So we can now just time accelerate because really we've got nothing else to do. So let's do our time accelerate to bring ourselves out into deep space. Now the important thing is we have solar panels. Without the solar panels our electric charge would continue to deplete. And with space probes when your, um, when your electric charge reaches zero the space probe dies and becomes uncontrollable. So we're waiting for about 80. Bang, you see the nav ball changed orientation. That is because we're now orbiting high above the sun. And we can do our materials science here. Let's rotate the spacecraft. Oh, look how slowly it rotates. Observe materials bay. Observe. High radiation environment caused the samples to glow. Observe the mystery goo. The goo feels right at home in here. And we cannot do temperature science because we are high above the sun you have to be you know l flying low over the sun low is where your altitude is about 1000 here it's 13000 million meters so let's transmit the science home it will render these canisters and science containers useless but the space probe will continue to live. However, it no longer has a mission of note. If you want, if you really want, you can try and fly it back to the planet Kerbin, but good luck landing it without a parachute. So one thing you might notice is from deep space, you no longer can mouse over this to recover the spacecraft. Uh, what you have to do, of course, is press the escape key and go to the space center. So from the space center, we can go to the tracking station and in the tracking station, you can see untitled spacecraft orbiting the sun. Obviously, I did not give it a particularly glorious name, considering its pioneering nature. Now, from here, you can fly it again if you like, or you can terminate the mission. Terminating the mission will kill any Kerbals on board. Uh, you know, you might just want to leave it flying around the sun because you uh, want to leave it as a memento or something. Or you might be terrified it might come home and hit something. Regardless, that's up to you. Now, back at the Space Center, we can just take a look at what we've got with our science. I now have 123 science. Don't worry if you haven't got this much science because you've, you know, perhaps missed some previous experiments. You can still get lots of science by flying all around Kerbin. There's a bunch of biomes there. Use all the science instruments and go back to places you've already gone. And that's how you get more science. Now, with 126 science, there's only a few things that I, I can unlock. I can't go all the way up and get these, you know, rover wheels. And I can't get these bigger solar panels, as sweet as they are. But I can get fuel systems, and this is going to be an important one for our next episode. We unlock tiny little engines there. We unlock uh, monopropellant and reaction control systems and the fuel line. So we'll be using those in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.